What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of Mavitag. Now if you don't know a video, your ass just clicked on. This is my Evil Within review. With horror games becoming lackluster at best and straying away from the original formula of survival horror making you fear for your life, the Evil Within comes in time just when we need it the most. Director Shinji Mikami, creator of Resident Evil and the director of the great Resident Evil 4, leads with his studio Tango Games to create the best experience that's both visually, physically, and mentally appealing to horror fans. Does The Evil Within revitalize the survival horror genre and give us the best experience we've been waiting so long for? Or does it get lost in the crowd and get beheaded? This is Mavitag's The Evil Within review, and without further ado, let's fucking start. Story. The story starts you off as Detective Sebastian Castellanos on a routine call to a massive homicide scene in a mental hospital. He is accompanied by his two partners, and this is ultimately where the nightmare begins. Waking up tied upside down isn't the best way to wake up from a sound slumber, but Sebastian has to use his wits to survive the future terrors that come and the game's long story that follows. Encountering loads of enemies, scares, and mental tricks, the story will have you feeling intense and on edge for about 95% of the game. Sebastian himself is a relatively boring protagonist as he spouts corny one-liners and at times it becomes comical how corny this shit can really be. Although Sebastian isn't as dull as a few recent protagonists from games of this year, he generally gets scared and reacts to situations that anybody else would. Overall, the story keeps you interested and on the edge of your seat the whole time, even though, and no spoilers here, the ending can be a tad bit disappointing if you're expecting a spectacular conclusion. Gameplay. The gameplay of The Evil Within reminds me why I love and have missed great survival horror games. Sporting solid controls, you walk, run in third person, and can do a number of things to interact with the environment, yourself, or enemies. Ammo and supplies are scarce, and the world is littered with traps that, if you aren't careful, can leave you in tiny bits all over the floor. These traps can be broken down into parts to help you craft ammo or items, but be warned, one slip up and you could lose a substantial amount of health and draw attention to yourself. Instead of money, the currency, so to speak, is in the form of brain juice, which can help you upgrade your skills, weapons, or tools, and help you, for example, sprint longer and faster, or give you shotgun or crossbow added bonuses to damage, range, etc. The hub where you upgrade also allows you to save the game, and acts as sort of a safe house to you during your time here. There are stealth mechanics in the game that sometimes work effectively, if only the enemies weren't so alert of your presence pretty much all the time. Speaking of enemies, there's a range here. You'll typically run into infected humanoid zombie type enemies, but there's plenty of variety that tickle you in one way or another. Like this one, for example. Fucking terrifying. <laughs> all in all, the gameplay is super solid and it's easy to pick up and learn, although you may die literally hundreds of times by the game's conclusion. Seriously, you will die a lot. I died a lot of fucking times and it tells you at the end of the game how many times you died. Things I liked. The overall feel of the game, I felt on the edge of my seat the whole time I played, grabbing my controller harder than I ever had, especially with the headset lights off at night alone, it's crazy. The game reminded me of earlier survival horror games, much like Resident Evil 4, just updated to fit the times. I liked the lack of ammo and supplies, it made me feel frantic and it really made me make choices based on what was going on in the situation. The Evil Within really makes you think. The graphics, now, they aren't anything revolutionary, but the art direction and graphics help you get immersed into the game, and the letterboxing on the screen helps to make it feel like a interactive movie sort of over a game, which isn't a bad thing. The difficulty, even on the survival game mode, which seems to be close to a medium difficulty, is still hard as shit. There are so many times you'll die from your own fuck ups and it's a great feeling knowing your survival is in your own hands, and if you fuck up, you fuck up royally. Things I disliked. I didn't like how boring Sebastian was. I want a protagonist that I can relate to a little more, at least on one level, and although as stated earlier, he isn't as boring as some other characters that won't be mentioned, but I want more depth to my characters. The game really has no replay value, as it's a single player, as expected, they typically provide no other options of replayability. You'll replay it if you love the game, and you want it to be even harder, but I say, Good luck to you. <laughs> the checkpoints in a game are hard to come by as well, so you can be fighting and surviving for 10 minutes or so and still never hit a checkpoint, making it even harder to survive, and it can end up being frustrating after you've cleared two large sections, killed massive enemies, done all the surviving, and then you die having to start back over because the checkpoints were so spread apart. Overall. Overall, The Evil Within is something great and Mikami did a great thing by bringing it back to its roots and making it a sort of Resident Evil spiritual successor. Now, do I think this game is worth it? 
Yes, but this game is a must play for anyone looking to play a horror game. I'm very happy with my purchase, but as I always say, you should try the game out for yourself to voice your own opinion. But I absolutely loved it. I loved every minute of it. I was just, oh man, I love survival horror, and The Evil Within definitely delivered. It did its job. I'm so content and happy with my purchase. But thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, please be sure to do so. Leave a comment, let me know how you felt about the video. And also, consider subscribing to join the MAV movement, because we out here making moves. We're getting, we're, it's, it's phenomenal, the growth right now. And you guys are all making this possible for me. And not just me, but everybody else. So we're all working together. It's a community. I love you all. Thank you all so much for watching. But with all that being said, I will see you all on the next episode of Mav Attack, motherfucker.